Hello and welcome to the 2023 Year in Review by The Wandering Pearl. Hey y'all, it's Bethany and I am so excited to go over the 2023 year in review of everything from did I make my goals, how many grams did I use, what happened during life, all of that. So that's what you can expect during this little bonus episode. I want to first wish everyone a happy 2024. I hope this year brings health and happiness to everyone who is watching and of course, lots and lots of knitting and crocheting and whatever craft you do. So we may have some interruptions from birds, dogs, all kinds of things, but we're going to get this done because that's just how my life goes. So we are going to jump right in and start off with some numbers. Let's talk some goals. So I have my notes here from my 2023 kind of goals and my 2022 year in review. Um, and I want to go over what those were. So my focus was to be on garments. I wanted to make at least 12 adult size garments. Um, and that means my kids in, are included in that because they're like adult size now. Um, but that didn't include baby items. And then I also wanted to make 52 preemie hats. So those were my goals for 2023. The projects that I wanted to work on were sweaters for all of my kids, a pullover for Brian, all of the lights cardigan, stockings possibly, like the holiday doodle stockings, um, the Whitmore sweater, and also the Eve's cardigan. So I made all three of my kids sweaters, which I'm really proud of. I am currently working on the Star Wars sweater for Brian, so that is the pullover for him. So I am working on that. It is the end of the year and will not be finished by the end of the year, but I have already got like halfway through, so that's good. Um, the All of the Lights cardigan, check. I made that one. Um, the stockings I did not make, um, although they are still on my to make list. I did make the Whitmore cardigan, which was such a fun make and so beautiful, and I'm really happy I did that. Um, and the Eve's cardigan, I did not make, and I have since decided I don't think I want to make it, um, and that's okay. So those were my goals for 2023. And then, oh, hold on. Look, we're going to go over the numbers in just a second, but spoiler alert, I didn't make 52 preemie hats. I don't even know if I made any preemie hats this year. So that one I didn't do at all. It was a good thought though. Um, so let's go over what I actually made this year. Let me get my notes here. So on Ravelry, there were 57 project pages. My book just fell, sorry. Um, and shout out to this book that is falling apart. I have had this notebook since the very, very first podcast. Um, and this is the very last video that I am using this book for because I am at the very end. So I thought it was pretty fitting that this book was my 2022-2023 podcasting book. I've ordered some new books to use for upcoming, but this one will always hold a special place in my heart because it has all of my notes of figuring out this whole YouTube thing. And I'm really, I'm going to treasure it for sure. Okay, back to what I was talking about, if I can find the right page. <laughs> okay, so let's go through the numbers of what I knit this year. According to Ravelry, I had 57 projects. Um, but I'm kind of weird and don't, like if I have can cozies, or not can cozies, yarn cozies, I will put them all into one project page and not make multiples. Um, I just like to kind of keep it contained like that. So when I went through and actually counted the different projects, there were 67. So that's a little lower than last year, I believe. How many did I have last year? Let me look. Where are you at? Here we go. I had 79 last year. So it's 
Yeah, like 12 less, but <laughs> bless you, River. But I had some bigger projects, so I'm okay with that. So let's go through exact all of the numbers. I have them written right here. So for garments, I made 13, which I am really proud of since my goal was to do 12. So I definitely checked that box and I'm working on my 14th one right now. Um, so that's really awesome. Hats, I made nine. I made six muscle burrows and then three baby hats. Gloves, I made five pairs of gloves. I made 13 pairs of socks. Four neckwear items. So I did um, the, the like turtleneck thing and then I also made some cowls. I made 20 of the little mini sweaters that I was doing for like the little Weasley sweaters, um, which were really fun to do, but I don't want to make any for a long time. <laughs> um, yarn cozies, I made seven. The little critters, like this little alpaca and my Santa gnome, I ended up making five. I made six mini socks during Advent that you will have seen. Um, baby toddler garments, I made three. I made a toddler dress, a baby dress, and then that um, baby cardigan. I made one headband and one shawl, which was my bluegrass. So I'm really happy with all of the projects that I got done. Um, I think that they all turned out fun. Not all amazing, but you know, there were some good ones in there. But I'm really happy with those numbers. And I think it's really funny that out of the hats that I made, like all the adult ones were muscle bros. <laughs> Those are just so easy, so fun, and so warm. So I love that one. Um, I also want to go over just real fast what, who I knit for. So I think my goal was kind of to um, make more for myself this year. And I did that. I made 22 items for me. Just me alone. Um, then I made 10 different items for my three kids, not individually, but like combined. Um, Brian, I made seven different things. So I made him like a pair of gloves, hats, and socks, of course. I made three things for my mom, two things for my dad. Um, and for us as a family, like the Santa gnome, the sweaters, and the little socks, I add those as like a family thing because they're decorations. That was three items. And then I made 10 different things for other people. Um, so a variety, a little heavy on the selfish knitting, but I think that's okay too. And um, what else was I going to say? There was something else. What else was I going to say? Now I can't remember. Hmm. Anyways, <laughs> I am really happy with all of that and what is going oh maybe what i was gonna do was talk about what my next year this year's um goals are that was where i was going so um 2023 was really the year of scrappy projects and using my stash which to begin with i don't think that was my goal like i didn't have use all my scraps up but I was watching last year's year in review. Oh, my foot's falling asleep. Sorry, guys. Um, my last year's year in review, and I had so many more scraps than I have right now. Um, it was really noticeable how much difference there was. Um, so I used through so many. I had so many different projects that I used. I used um, I exclusively scrappy projects. I counted on Ravelry that there were nine of those. So that is just heavily like used scraps. I'm not saying this correctly or how I want to. Let me bring up my computer real fast because I made some notes on which projects I used for the scrappy projects. So I used the scrappy rib socks. I had a scrappy muscle bro. The under rainbow cowl that I made for my daughter was used with scraps. My bluegrass shawl that you see behind me on at the table um, was all scraps, which was awesome. Um, the seamless toddler dress that I made for my niece was all scraps. I also used scraps for the Grammys in a row socks for my mom for Christmas. Um, all of my little mini, um, 
sweaters. They were all from scraps as well, except a couple of them were minis, but I mean, that's kind of scrappy too. Um, and then my Advent mini socks were also all scraps. They were actually from Advent, but they're scrap yarns, so that counts. So I was really, 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 really happy with that. And I think I might can see that continuing into the this year because I really have enjoyed using those scraps up and kind of not having as many. I've also given away quite a few scraps um, and just tossed a few as well, if I'm being honest. But I also really use my stash a lot. Um, I use some yarns that I have had for years and years and I have kind of shrunk my stash. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But um, 24 of the projects from this year were all from stash. Um, and that's in addition to the nine scrappy projects. So I used either all from my stash or majority of the project from my stash for 24 of the projects for this year. So for using from my stash was over half of all the projects that I used this year, which I am really, really excited about because that was something that I wanted to do for 2023 was use up my stash. I also de-stashed quite a few skeins, just ones that have been in there since like 2020. And my style and my taste has changed a bit since then. So I just decided to try and de-stash some and I was really lucky that I was able to. Um, and now I have room in my stash for even more beautiful skeins. Um, I still have quite a few from, you know, that time, but I am well on the way to working on my stash. I have three projects coming into 2024 with me. The first one is the Star Wars sweater by Natalie Meredith. I am making this for my husband and it is sadly coming into the new year with me, but if I can get some motivation, hopefully I can knock it out of the park soon. The second one is my, I always say it wrong, so where is it? Cozy Comfort Throw. This is the Advent project that I have been working on. It is about halfway done, maybe a little more than halfway. So I am hoping to finish this by the end of January. I also really want to put it in the pigskin party because it has a lot of yardage on it, um, but I am really excited. I'm loving working on it. It is so much fun, um, and it's just been a joy and that is by a homespun house and the third project is I randomly cast this on this week definitely didn't mean to but I hadn't cast anything on since the beginning of the month and I was kind of itching to cast something new on so I cast on some knee-high socks this is kind of a pattern that I um, came up with on my own. So I'll have the Ravelry page down below with all of my notes. Um, but I am taking a 100 gram skein and a 50 gram skein and striping them um, and just making some really high vanilla socks. Um, I pulled out, I had made these previously with scrap yarn. And I pulled them out and wore them de during December and I just loved them. And it really made me want to make another pair. So that's what I cast on. So I'm, I'm really enjoying working on those so far. Um, so those are the three that are coming into 2024 with me, but I do already have some thoughts and plans and ideas of what I might want to make in 2024. So these are going to be just a few of the things that I am thinking about or are on my radar. So the first project is the stockings. I had this on last year's video of wanting to make these and I didn't get around to them. But in the Love and Stitches membership, we're about to do a doodle make along. So I'm thinking this might be the time for me to jump in and try and make these stockings. So I'm either thinking of the top down Christmas stockings by Faye Kennington or the holiday doodle stockings by Jamie Lomax. So those are definitely on the radar to possibly start in January. I also really like the Voyage um, cardigan by Wool and Pine, but the stockings are color work and this is color work. And I just don't know if my brain and my mental capacity can take doing that much color work so close together, but maybe sometime in 2024, I will try the voyage and see if it's any good. 
And then another one that I have yarn for and actually bought yarn, I think in November for, is the Fairweather Sweater by Pippin Pen. This one is gorgeous and I definitely still want to make this sweater. Um, so it is on my to make list and I already have the yarn. So that's perfect. Um, and then other things that are just kind of general. Both my husband and my youngest son want some gloves, the finger gloves that I made um, this past November. They are the Jervis gloves. So I will be making at least two more pairs probably three because my daughter will want some too so that will be something that I work on at some point <laughs> um more gnomes and critters in 2024 I want to make more gnomes I want more more critters I love it it's kind of an obsession now um so yeah look out for more of those this year I also really love my oversized v-neck um, Northwood sweater that I made. I was wearing it a little earlier and it is, ah, uh, I love it so much. I didn't think I was going to like it that much, but I do. So I really think that another version of that, not that exact same one probably, but a different one may be in my future. Um, another bubble cardigan is a must. I, I really, 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 really want to cast that on, but I'm trying to be good. I need to finish this blanket and I need to finish my husband's sweater first. So that might be the next cast, big cast on that I do next. I don't know, but I'm wanting to go through stash again and work through my stash and try to find some colors in there. I have a lot of blush yarns in there that would work really well. Um, I don't know. I'm really excited. Um, I'm going to do things a little differently. I think I'm going to make a size smaller. I'm also going to, um, shorten it a bit and I'm just really, really excited to, to see what I can find and do with that. Um, let's see. I would love to do a project with lots and lots of cables. Like my, all of the lights had a lot of cables and I really, really enjoyed making that. So I want to be on a lookout for a project that has a lot of cables that I can make and just kind of challenge myself with. Um, and lastly, I would like to do a little bit more knitting for others. Um, the last year or two, I have been quite a selfish knitter, I feel like, um, which is not a bad thing, but I really enjoy giving and gifting to people. So I think I might try to do a little bit more of that this year, but we'll see. Another thing that I really want to work on for 2024 is working through my stash. Um, I did really well until the end of the year when I bought yarn specifically for a project. Um, and I haven't made that project yet. Um, so I really enjoyed working through that. I'd really like to kind of not necessarily not buy yarn. That's what I said last year. But um, if there's a project that I really want to make and I can buy the yarn for it, then sure, I want to do that. But if there's like a project and I'm like, it needs one or two skeins, I want to look at my stash and see if I can pull from there first. Just like with the socks and the knee highs that I'm currently working on, I'm using a skein that I have had in my stash since 2021, I believe. 2021. Yeah, 2021. And then another one that I've had for probably since the same year. Um, so I'm really excited to be using those finally and to not just hold on to them because they're pretty, but actually put them in a project because that's what the yarn is for. It's to be used, not just to sit up in a cabinet and collect dust. Um, so knit for others, knit from stash, and just have fun this year. That's what I want for 2024. Let's go over some of my favorites, least favorites, challenging, all the fun kind of little projects that happened in 2023. So let's start off with my favorite make of 2023. Um, it might not be a surprise at all, but it is my bubble cardigan because I love this thing so much. If you watched Vlogmas, you know that I wear it all the time. You probably got tired of seeing it, but I absolutely love this so, so much. So shout out to my friend Allison who made this and bragged on it so much and made such a beautiful version that I wanted to make it because I love it. Um, so this is definitely my favorite make of the whole year, but I do have a couple little extras that I want to throw in that I really, really enjoyed making. So one of those is the Something Cozy. This is 
one of this was such a fun make i literally made this in a week i used some special yarn that we had in the love and stitches membership and i i loved making this so much it was such a fun fun make to do so oh let me just say all of the information for every single project that i talk about will be listed down below by section so if you're like what did she say that was who did she say that was by you don't have to worry about writing it down just go look down below and you'll be able to find all that information and then all of my ravelry will be listed down below too so this one was one of those ones that was really really fun to make um really fast and just a joy I really just enjoyed it um the second one is my all of the lights by Hohi Locatelli so this one was beautiful challenging and fun and it was just one of those that I really enjoyed making also then the other one that was really really fun to make was my bluegrass shawl by wool and pine so this one i used all scraps for and it took me quite a while to make it but it was just so fun to do it had the brioche and i don't want to open the whole thing because well you know what i will um so there's also one there's a string here that needs to be fixed so just ignore that but this was just so fun to make and it used up so many scraps so it was really a great stash buster i love how it turned out and um even though i'm not really a shawl user i use this for my podcast mostly um just to sit in the background but i really really enjoyed making it and that kind of kicked off my um wool and pine make segment of my life because after this I just wanted to make everything wool and pine <laughs> and the other little one that was also a really big favorite for me was my Santa gnome he has already put away because Christmas is over but I really really enjoyed making him I didn't know if I would like making little critters like knitted ones but I really really enjoyed it and it was just so fun and I'm just kind of so proud of my little Santa gnome um so that was another of my favorites from this year my least favorite make of the year so my least favorite make I was going through and I was like this is really hard to pick I don't know what to pick and then I remembered the baby card again so this is the Baby Boys Raglan Cardigan by Siddhar. And I wanted to make something for a childhood friend who was having a baby. And I wanted something with cables and kind of really fun. So I picked this pattern. And the pattern was really just not well written, I don't think. Um, in my opinion, it wasn't. And it was pieced together. And it turned out really cute, I think. But I just did not enjoy making it. Um, so that is going to be the one that I picked for my least favorite, even though it turned out really cute. Um, and it has been gifted and, um, been worn by its recipient. I just would not make it again and would not recommend the pattern for anyone. The most challenging make of 2023 was the all of the lights pattern, which I don't think anyone will be surprised at. This was the pattern that I held up on a pedestal and was like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I don't know if I'd ever be able to make it. Um, and I've been wanting to make it for many years. And then I finally did it this year, which I was so excited for. I really, I decided I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do it right. I'm going to make sure that like I don't mess things up and don't get frustrated and not rush through it because that's something that I am definitely guilty of is rushing through things. Um, so I did all of those things and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Um, if I were to do it again, which there is a possibility I might do it again, I would use different yarn because the yarn that I got for it was Miss Babs, not the color. I just had a bad... I just had bad vibes from it. I had this yarn in stash. Then I bought more of it. And then it wasn't the same dye lot. And I've just had a lot of... Didn't I have this in... No, I didn't have this in stash. I lied. I bought this new and it didn't look anything like what the picture looked like. Um, so I just had some problems with the yarn. But in the end, I finished it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful make. And I am just so proud of it. Um, so 
yeah, that was the most challenging of the year, but I will say Hohi does an amazing job of writing her patterns and <laughs> this bird will not stop chatting. Um, and it was really, really easy to follow and she had it step by step and everything. And that made it so much more enjoyable and not as scary because of her pattern writing. I'm going to let you guys guess what this one is. What is my most worn make of 2023? I might be wearing it right now. <laughs> so it is definitely my bubble card. And again, the moment that I made it, I haven't taken it off since. So for the last five months, this has been what I wear. I love it. I wear it everywhere. I mean, it has like, you can see it has all these like fuzzies on it. It has pulled stitches. I don't care because I love it so, so much. So this is definitely my most worn of 2023 and yeah, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. <laughs> all right. Most proud of from all the projects. So I couldn't pick just one, but I picked a couple different ones to go through. One of course is going to be the All of the Lights because that was that big pattern that I absolutely loved and didn't know if I could actually make. So I did it and I'm very, very proud of that. Um, my little Santa Gnome, another one that I'm really proud of because I just didn't know if I'd be able to create those tiny little creatures that are so so cute and I did and it turned out really cute um so the Santa and then also my little alpacas my sweet little alpacas I really love how these turned out and I just think that they're so cute and I really really enjoyed making them so I'm really proud of my little alpaca guys and then let me see I have a one more that I'm really proud of and that is the Corgi sweater. I made this for Felicity back in the very beginning of 2023. Um, uh, it's color work, which is not my strong suit. And she loves it. Other people have made comments about how good it looks. And I'm just really proud that I made that and that I was able to, to accomplish it and to make it look half decent. So those, those are my most proud of projects of 2023. I would love to hear down below what are some of your favorite projects that you made this year? What are you most proud of? Let us know because I would love to see all of your beautiful makes. In 2023, I was really passionate about keeping track of how many grams, how many yards, how many everything I did in my projects. So I made a spreadsheet on Google and really just tried to keep track and on top of everything that I used and how much it took for all the projects. I will have a link, to, I'll have a, hold on, let me try this again. I will have a version of this link down below that you guys can copy and use for yourself if you're interested in doing that in 2024. I am planning to do it exactly the same way I did it um, this past year because I had so much fun doing it and it was really fun at the end of the year to kind of go through um, and look at my numbers and see how everything tracked. Um, I really, really enjoyed doing that this year. Um, and I will probably be putting on the screen some of my stats for you this year. Um, just so that you can kind of see how the year went. Um, but since I did this, I was able to um, keep track of how much yarn I had for each month, how much yarn came in, how much yarn went out, all these different things. Um, and I actually, at the end of the year, I started a category of all of my yarn or like a catalog, I suppose, um, of all my yarn. And that's making it really easy to keep track of everything and to know exactly how much yarn, what I have. When I use that yarn, I take it and put it down below and, and say how much yarn I have left from it. I've really just really, really, really loved enjoying doing this. Um, 
as you can probably tell, because I love being organized. I love having like my life together and having it in a nice little spreadsheet has been really fun. And I can't take all the credit for this. A lot of this came from watching um, Natalie of Nitty Natty in 2022 when she was doing her big D stash. Um, and it kind of inspired me to keep track of it and just do it a little better. Um, so let's go over some numbers, shall we? So in the beginning of 2023, I started the year off with 55 full 100 gram skeins in my stash. Um, my kind of in my head goal was to get down to 30 skeins by the end of the year um, and really try to use up my yarn. Um, and the ending number for the whole year of 2023, starting off 2024 in my stash, are 41 skeins. Um, so I'm not too bad about that. And I will say, if I hadn't gotten the yarn for the Fairweather sweater, and if I didn't still have some yarn for the Star Wars sweater in my, um, in my stash that I haven't pulled out yet, I would be much closer to 30. So that would be eight skeins. So I'd have like 33 skeins, which would be so, so close to that number. Um, so I'm not mad about the number at all because I know I'm going to be using those fairly quickly um, and be closer to that 30. Um, I don't know why I picked 30. That just seemed like a good number. So I don't think I ever want to not have any yarn because like when you decide, oh, I want to make some socks it's good to just go grab some yarn and make some socks, right? Um, so that is where I went from 55 to 41. It is less, so that I'm calling a win. The really big number I was excited to compile was how many grams and how many yards I used for the entire year of 2023. So these, the way I count these are when a project is finished is when those get counted. Um, so like my Star Wars sweater and my um, cozy comfort throw are not included in this because they're not finished yet. But anything that I finished after January 1st up until December 31st are included in that. Um, so I'm really, really excited for this. Um, I'm not sure if this is a good number or a bad number, but I was happy with the number. So the amount of grams that I actually used in projects in 2023 and finished the projects are 8,877 grams. It's a lot. I just did the math real fast and those grams equal 88 skeins of yarn of 100 gram skeins. That's crazy, 88. I mean, a lot of this was scraps, so it was all yarn that I'd used before, but that's pretty cool that I ended up using 88, basically, skeins, if you, if you count it that way. Um, and then yards. Yards are so cool. I love this. So the yards that I used of yarn in 2023 was 30,623 yards. That's crazy. I just love that so much. I think those numbers are just so fun. So if you by chance checked your numbers, let me know down below what yours were because I would love to know. I think that would just be so much fun um, if we could all kind of just like compile numbers and see it's not a, it's not at all a competition or anything like that. And it's just fun to hear and kind of know everyone's numbers because I know mine are not the highest and I know they're not the lowest, but um, it's it's just fun. I think it's really fun. So those are kind of my uh, my fun little numbers for 2023. Now let's chat about what happened in 2023 life-wise. So as you may know, we are a traveling family. My husband is a travel nurse. So we move all over all the time in our 43 foot fifth wheel. And it is five of us. So it is my husband and me, and then our three kids, um, our daughter Felicity, and then our boys are 13 and 11, Kai and Grayson. Um, I have two teenagers in the house now. So crazy. But <laughs> We all live here and we all travel around and in the year of 2023, we started off in Colorado in this little tiny town called Strasburg, which is 
just outside of Aurora, Colorado. Um, we were there for probably like two or three weeks in the very beginning of the year. And then we got an assignment over in Washington State. And we stayed in Gig Harbor, Washington for about six months. And it was so fun. We absolutely loved our time in Washington and really would like to go back someday. And then the last part of the year, the last about five months or so, we have been here in northern Utah, and it is really exciting to be back in Utah. We have always loved Utah. It's such a beautiful area, and it's very snowless right now, which is very uncommon, and I call that the us curse because everywhere we go, the weather normally is very different than it's supposed to be. So it happens all the time. So the fact that there is no snow is our fault, and I apologize for that to all all the Utes out there, I I know it's our fault. <laughs> but we really had a great year overall. We got to explore so much of the Pacific Northwest while we were in Washington. We went to so many different beautiful areas out on the Olympic Peninsula. We went to um, the farthest point, the farthest point north west in the continental U.S. in Washington, which is beautiful. We also, um, you can hear the birds squawking. I had to put him to sleep. So he's in darkness right now because he wouldn't stop squawking. So now he's making little angry noises at me. But um, we got to go and explore the rainforest there. We went to Canada for the very first time. It was my kid's first time ever out of the United States. And my mom also went with us and was her first time out of the United States. Um, Brian and I have both been to Mexico before. So it was our second time out of the U.S. But he, he's done it a couple times, I think. He's more traveled than I am, but that was really fun. And then here in Utah, we have spent a lot of family time together. Um, it hasn't been quite as enjoyable here in Utah as we had hoped because things have just kind of been up and down, but, um, God provides and we're very grateful for that. Um, we were very healthy and happy during 2023. So I am so grateful for that. And also, we have animals that you probably know about, especially if you watched Vlogmas, you will have seen quite a few of them. But we ended up gaining three animals this year, but we lost two. So we lost our sweet rescue Harry. Um, I believe this was in July of this year. Um, suddenly just passed away, was fine one moment and was not the next. Um, and that was devastating. We, we miss him so much. He was such a sweetie, but we're really glad that we got to have him for that last, we had him for about eight months. Um, and he was, he was so sweet and we're really glad that we were able to give him a pampered life in those last few months. And then my husband decided he wanted a bird and we got Skittles. Um, Skittles was the sweetest little bird ever. She was a green cheek conure and we absolutely just fell in love with her and love her, loved her so much. But unfortunately, she didn't make it. And um, that was so, so hard. Um, so we gained her and then we lost her, which was really sad. Um, but then we got a little Tweet Tweet over here who is a sun cheek conure. And man, is he a feisty little loud demon. No, he's very sweet. He's very different than Skittles and it's taking longer for us to, to warm up to us, but we are enjoying having him and having a bird is really fun. I've never had a bird before, so that has been really a new experience for me. And then if you watched Vlogmas, you'll we'll see for my birthday, Kai, or Brian got me little Lola, who is the most adorable feisty kitten, and I am enjoying her immensely. So we also have all our five dogs and then the other cats, so... We have a full house here, and that's exactly how we like it. Um, what else happened? Brian and I had our 17th wedding anniversary this year, which was really exciting, and we got to go out to dinner alone, which was nice. And But overall, 2023 was a good year. The ending has been a little rough on us, but overall, it was really great, and we really are happy that you guys have come along with us with all of our vlogs and all of my podcasts and everything, so thank you for that, um, and that's just a little, little life section. Hopefully, in 2024, we will visit more new states, 
possibly go to Alaska. That would be really, really awesome. That would be like a big goal is to um, head up to Alaska. Um, but I don't know. I'm really excited to see where 2024 20, takes us and what kind of blessings and struggles and, you know, all the things happen and see how God guides our life through the year. So this wraps up my 2023 year in review. I hope that you have enjoyed all the fun makes that I did, a lot of which are right here behind me. Um, and also just kind of going through what happened in my year. I would love to hear what your plans are for 2024 down below and look out for the next podcast, which is coming on the 5th of January. Hope you guys have a wonderful 2024 and I'll see you in the next one.